Good morning and welcome. This is Pastor Lucy Painter. This week we are doing a recap of the Personal Chronicles. Thank you so much for your support. We now have a website that is dedicated to the podcast. If you want to leave a comment, if you want to leave an emoji, if you want to leave a like, if you want to leave a suggestion, a question, you can do so on this web page. You can also support us or partner with us on the partner page through Patreon, through uh, Anchor Support, through Buy Me Coffee app. You can do all that in our web page. The web page URL is www.podcast.pastorlucypainter.com. Again, www.podcast.pastorlucypainter.com. You can subscribe through email and you get the episodes, updates, and notification in your email. And that way, you get to listen to the podcast and the episodes at your own time. God bless you and thank you for your support. Here is a recap of today's Personal Chronicles. Shalom. Hello and welcome. Pastor Lucy Painter here with your daily insight. And today we complete the Personal Chronicles Day 5. It has been an exciting week. We've talked about God's involvement in our daily life uh, through my sharing of personal encounters. And today I want to talk about God's involvement in our relationships, uh, friendships uh, that we have, uh, close people that we have. It is the desire of the Lord that we not be hooked with the wrong people because wrong association is always unhealthy. So, my life of friendship has not always been easy. And it got to a place that I had to pray that God, give me friends. Give me genuine friends. So, I'm going to take you back to where my fear started. Back in high school. I remember the first day in high school was a nightmare. It was the first day I would be away from home. And after admission, I waved at my parents' car until it had disappeared in the horizon. The tightening in my chest eventually gave in to streams of tears as the reality hit. I am all alone and away from home. No one prepared me for what followed. As I walked to the dormitories, I heard somebody shout and burst into laughter at the same time. I turned around and to my astonishment, I was the object of these hilarious moments. A group of girls stood and laughed, pointing at me as their leader cheered, jeered and mimicked my walking style. And as she did that, she shouted, wasp, wasp, she called. I purposely ignored her and tried to walk as fast as I could, but they kept following me. Fortunately, the matron came to my rescue and the bully bunch dispersed. So you can imagine my first encounter away from home, the first day in high school, and I get bullied and I get a nickname. I am wasp to them and the girls were laughing. So in the dorm, there were other new girls who were in tears. And I wondered if they were lonely, homesick, or they had encountered the same welcome I got. And the excitement I had felt a month earlier when I received the acceptance letter letter to join this prestigious high school was nowhere to be traced. I kept wondering, why did they call me wasp? Why that insect? How How can young girls be so mean to a stranger? And eventually, later on, I learned that the girl who terrorized me was a Form 3, uh, that is a junior student, the 11th grader, 
who enjoyed bullying the form ones, the ninth grader or the freshman. And the nickname was, was due to my tiny waist. And in all this experience, what bothered me most was the crew that laughed and supported that mischief. And that is where my fear of friends started. And I found myself very cautious, very cautious. When it comes to opening up and getting close to people. So later on in the year, one of my social ethics class teacher uh, spoke about relationship and friendship. I think it was one of the topics. And she was also the CU patron. And she talked about sharing. And afterwards, she called me to the office and said, Lucy, you didn't have anything to contribute when we asked about who are your friends. Who are those people you walk around in school? And said, I don't have any. Say, who do you share with? What do you feel? Say, I just pray. She told me, so why don't you pray the way you pray that God is going to give you friends? I said, all right, I'm going to pray that. So by the end of the first year of high school, I remember making this prayer. I said, God, give me friends. Give me genuine friends. Give me friends that will not influence me to do evil but who will influence me and I will influence them to do that which is right and God is faithful Uh, by the next year when I came back to school God connected me with these wonderful wonderful girls that we have kept in touch we reconnected the, the other day and we were best friends prayed together laughed together had fun together And so, in the years that followed, I always did that when I felt like I'm in a season in life that I need someone to walk with. You know, the Bible says that when the angel came to Mary and told him, you know what, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall conceive. This was phenomenal. This was something that nobody else had gone through before. And I always say that the angel knew that Mary needed somebody who would understand what she's going through, who would be there to share with her and encourage her. Why else would the angel share private details about Elizabeth, the cousin, if it was not the intention of the Lord to give Mary a support system in the midst of what she was going through? And so we find the angel telling Mary and your cousin Elizabeth is expecting. She's in the sixth month. And we find that from that information, Mary didn't have to seek who to share with. She knew she can walk and go to her cousin Elizabeth and share with her what she is going through and just walk the journey with her. And we find that when Mary... uh, went and found Elizabeth and the greetings alone the Bible says the greetings alone made the baby in Elizabeth to jump with joy and Elizabeth just spoke full of the Holy Spirit and if you are my friend you practically know this because I always say this that the first time we meet the first impression when we say hi the greetings alone if the child in me does not bubble up with joy, if, okay, I call him the child, but if the Holy Spirit in me, you may call it the God, however you call that instinct that tells you, all right, or screams red flags in any encounter, in every relationship, then I have to be cautious if I see or I feel something is not right the first time. And let me share with you this because this is the last day and usually on Friday we make it a bit longer. So let me share with you this. Anytime I have ignored those, you know, 
those warnings. I meet somebody, we talk, and that very first encounter, I get that feeling like, mm -mm. anytime I say, okay, let me give this person a chance, and I ignore those warnings. I end up getting hurt or betrayed in the in the in the in the future. And I have no one to blame because the Holy Spirit did his work at the beginning and spoke to me in those subtle ways that this relationship is not right. But whenever I meet someone who the Lord is bringing in my life for the season that I'm in There is that joy, there is that connection, there is that excitement. And you know what, when it comes to relationship, some people God bring in your life and then they, they don't look right. Like if you look with the natural eyes, but it is important for us to listen to that inner voice, inner leading, because we need friends. We need people to walk with us in every season of life. And as the famous saying goes, some friends are in your life for a lifetime. They're there to stay in good times, in bad times. They're there. They're there. Some people are in your life for a reason. Uh, it depends. But it may be your reason or their reason. Some relationships are based on the reason. And when the, relation, the reason is done or gone, That's it. Some people are there for a season. And that's what I'm talking about. There are seasons in life that you need people to walk with you. And I have learned to trust the Lord in every season of my life by the people he brings. And I have learned to wait and just obey. Sometimes I haven't obeyed. <laughs> I have my trail of miserable relationships, friendships, that because I didn't obey the very first instinct, the very first leading, that nudge, just like Elizabeth and Mary, the first greetings, and the baby jumped for joy. So if you're my friend, you know, I've practically said this, and in my language, it's so funny. I say it, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to force myself. Huh? That if I say hi to you, the first encounter, and I feel like in me there is a warning, there is a restriction, then I'm not going to pursue this relationship or this friendship because eventually there may be something there that will not sit right. I'm not going to make, make this disclaimer. That does not mean that you brush people off. Remember, I'm talking about relationship. Those three circle of friends, those people that are in a circle. Be careful who you bring in that inner circle. Some people are okay being just colleagues or acquaintances, but not in your inner circle. Let's trust the Lord because he is mindful of our relationship. If he did care, then there was no need of telling Mary about Elizabeth. But he cares. He cares. That's why David and Jonathan's hearts were knit together. They loved each other because David needed Jonathan at that season. And I know you need your Elizabeth. You need your Jonathan. May the Lord direct you in every season to have a person who can walk with you in the seasons of life. Shalom and God bless you. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insight. And again, today is day five of Personal Chronicles. Thank you so much for the feedback, for the love. Uh, this week I have received many messages of encouragement and people relating to those experiences I have shared. My main purpose is to let you know that God is involved in every detail of our life and as usual I always say if you want to become a subscriber to this podcast 
and support with your token of one dollar five dollar ten dollars uh you can just click support the support link that is right there and it will direct you how you're going to put in your card details and you'll be charged every month and become a support or a subscriber to this podcast thank you thank you so much for your overwhelming support encouragement feedback I know that this week I've been vulnerable to share with you personal, intimate details, encounters with the Lord. But I want to assure you that God is involved in every detail of our life. Why? Because he loves us with unconditional and unfailing love. Let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this week. As I have shared encounters every day of your provision, of your protection, of your peace, O God, in the midst of chaos, O Lord, of your great deliverance in the midst of turmoil and danger and peril, my Father. And Lord, as I have even shared of your involvement in our decision making oh god and today even in our relational lives oh god you care about us lord and i pray for my listeners dear father that we're gonna be whole we're gonna be whole spiritually mentally socially oh god and physically we are going to be whole because lord you love us with an everlasting and unfailing love we thank you and we honor you in jesus name we pray Amen and amen. Shalom. This is Pastor Lucy Painter with your daily insights.